I have been living in this city for 51 years. And that I think I'm one of the oldest guys in the room. I think, all, how many of you have lived here for 51 years? Not too many? Okay. And does anybody know what this photograph represents? How many are you from Bangalore? Oh, that's a quite a few. What is this picture? Avenue Road. Yeah, but what precisely? Avenue Road is right, but what precisely? It is the center of Bangalore. That is the point at which Bangalore was founded. And this is the condition it is in. Right? The founder of Bangalore hitched four bullocks and made them walk in four directions from this point. And no, it is completely forgotten. What do Bangaloreans today do for leisure and recreation? Earlier, we used to sit in cars and that's gone today. A waiter used to come with dosas as a drive-in restaurant. And that was about it. What else do we do? We go and eat dosas somewhere with our families or friends. We go and party. I'm sure all of you do that a lot. Right? We go and watch films or drink in a bar or go to a pub, right? We go pub crawling all over the place. But all these you have to pay for, okay? Right? And all of you are also familiar with this scene. Every night in Bangalore, you have guys who have breathalyzers and they don't have batteries for them, so they smell you instead and say, inside, right? And all these you have to pay for. But true leisure and true recreation means the enjoyment of public spaces. And in India, in this, I think you pointed out that in this mad race of, uh, uh, towards so-called progress and civilization, we have forgotten the simple joys of life, like taking a walk, like going to a park, spending time with our family and friends. And when we do so, there are cops filming us, right? When young people are doing that, cops are taking pictures of us, right? And what else happens? We go to malls, but we don't buy anything. And we just go and do window shopping. And this is, I think, a very common activity today in Bangalore to go and hang around in malls because why? Because there are, no, there are no spaces. Or if you don't have any money, you hang around on the footpath. We call it in Canada, we call it care of footpath, means you don't have anything to do. And these kind of activities, people are actually making a living out of living there, but also obstructing you when you want to walk on those footpaths. So who's more important? The guys who are earning the living or your access to be able to walk around the city? These are questions that have been troubling me for a long time. And as a company, my, I run a, I'm, I'm like, I've got about four balls in the air at any given time. I run an architecture firm. I also run an urban design collective which helps the city better itself. I also run a, I think all of you are in the, everybody here is in startup mode. I also run a startup accelerator. So I'm trying to see how I can bring all these things together to make this city a better place to live in. Right? Today we are taken over by the automobile. It's a tyranny. I mean, wherever you go, the cars and the buses and the bikes seem to get preference over the people. You know, every city in the world seems to have a department of motor vehicles. And if you ask somebody how many vehicles there are in the, there in the city, they'll say 53 lakh, 43,000, or something like that. Precise number will be given to you. You ask the same guy, how many pedestrians are there in the city? So they look at you and say, really, what's that? Nobody, and most of the time, we, have, we should be walking around. We should create a city that you can walk in and not use fossil fuels and further deplete our planet, right? And can anybody recognize this street? It's commercial street, right? This is what, I mean, this is, look at it. It's a place for people or is it a place for cars? Cars don't buy anything, people do. Right? So, and really, on the bright side, we have traditional spaces within the city which are full of life and full of color. This is the flower market and city market, which I'm sure may nobody goes to anymore. People have forgotten that the city market was the center of Bangalore in the 30s and 40s and almost up to the 50s. 
And if you had a day to go out, my, you know, my, I'm not that old, but I remember even that when I was a kid, my parents would take me to city market and that area would be not just a market, but it's also a cultural space. Recently, all of you have seen, this is what MG Road, after the metro has done its damage, looks like it was a beautiful road when I was a kid, but this is what it looks like on a daily basis. And as part of the, I'm part of the Karnataka Vision Group on Tourism, and la we decided that let's make an open street day. And we tried it out in HSR layout and commercial street, and last week, it looked like this. And more than 200,000 people came there to have a good time. How many of you were there? See, did you like have a good time? I'm sure. So it was like a, almost like a reiteration that people in Bangalore need something to do beyond drinking, watching movies, or eating. And it's a place to just be somewhere without paying for it all the time, right? I have, there has not been so easy for us to create it in public spaces, but as an architect, I have done what I can with inside private developments. Many of you may recognize this as the plaza inside behind the Orion Mall in Rajajinagar. And on any day, if you go there, I mean, all of you have heard this big controversy regarding gated communities, right? You can't get into anything. This is the largest ungated community in Bangalore. It was designed as an ungated community. And on any day, in the evenings, this is a mela there. Anybody can go in. It is not a restricted space. And it, you don't have to buy anything if you don't want to. But you, if you want to, you can, of course. But you can just hang around with your family around her. And the lake is made out of recycled rainwater from all these buildings. It never, no water ever leaves that land. We've tried to create these kind of places all over the city in a public way, not just in a private realm. Right? So we've been working on many things within the city. I'll show you a few examples. This is what I call, you know, a city has spaces, it has roads, but unless it has places, and what I call placemaking is an active way of making these things happen, it's not going to happen. This is what the city looks, the street looks like on an average day. And we've tried to, and in India, if you show drawings on a plan, nobody understands. So you, we use an old computer trick called WYSIWYG. Is what you see is what you get. You know, it's an acronym. And we use 3D technology and imaging technology to make it look like that. See, this is what it looks like now. On, on, this is taken at 6.30 in the morning. That's why it looks so nice. But usually it looks like the earlier picture. This is the condition of Church Street. And once we are done, the project is underway and hopefully will be executed soon. And if it's done, it will look like that. So you can see what a huge difference. And we've done nothing. We've not taken anybody's property. We've just made the footpaths clean, the roads wide. And it's based on a Parisian model of putting cobblestones, which are, instead of putting road bumps, if you drive on a cobblestone, the car makes noise and you'll slow down automatically. It's an automatic traffic calming device, <laughs> right? You don't need any bumps at all. And, and that's what it looks like when you look at it from Brigade Road. All these are taken at 6.30 in the morning because it's impossible to take a picture at any other time. And when we are done with it, please notice that I've not changed anything of the buildings or anything like that. It will look like that. And if this happens, Bangalore will finally, you know, our, today in our uh, environment, our indoors, our interiors of Indian buildings are as good as anything else in the world. You can't tell the difference. If you go to a five-star hotel in India or even an office, you can't figure out which country you are in except there are a lot of Indian guys hanging around. <laughs> right? you, you could be anywhere, right? But the moment you step out of the five-star hotel, your foot goes straight into a ditch with running sewage. <laughs> and you know which country you are reminded where you are immediately, right? And but... So our job, my job really by mission, is to make our outdoors as good as our indoors. And that requires not just government or architects, it requires a change in the psychology and the thinking of people. All of you should start believing that our commons, the common areas, are as much your property as your own house. And you, sh you should not be very, very careful not to spoil it and be actively involved in making it into a great place. This is how city market looked when I was a kid. It had fountains, it had statues, it was a beautiful place. And this is what it looks like now. There's a garbage dump, there are some sheds, there are some ugly buildings, 
and the whole thing is just a place where it is thinking. Please remember, all the vegetables you eat, ate today for breakfast or for lunch came from here. Okay, and if you see the condition, you'll stop even being a vegetarian. Forget about not being a vegetarian. Forget being a non-vegetarian. You'll stop being a, you don't know what to eat after that. And so after that, we took this and said, look, this has to be brought back. We want to bring back the lost center of the city. And it can look like that. There is that much open space there which is encroached by. It is the same shot, right? Can you make out? It's exactly the same angle. And it can look like that. That's the heritage building. There are enough places for open air vendors. There's a lot of public space. And the cars and the vehicles are restricted. There is enough space there to do it. But unfortunately, due to a lack of vision, this has been left to deteriorate. Like this is what it looks like. This distance between this building and this building is 200 feet. The road in the middle is 10 feet wide. Unbelievable. And it, just a little clean up and it will look like that. So can you imagine what will, how it will transform a city if it looks like this? You, and please note, at this corner is the metro station which is opening in another two months. Right? So in another two months, we have a metro underground station 100 meters from here. And, for some, and it's a great pleasure to go to the city market. If you have not done it, I ask you all to go and see it. It's a great experience to go to a place where there are no brands at all. You, know, you can't see a single brand because no brand wants to be there. But the moment the metro comes, I'm sure they'll all land up there once you all go there. Right? So we have, I've been trying to evangelize this topic in Kannada media, in English media, trying to make sure and trying to motivate a lot of younger people to come and help us to do this. It is an uphill task and it's like sometimes I feel like the myth of Sisyphus that I'm pushing this big ball up a hill. Every time I get to the top of the hill, it just rolls down and goes to the other side. So, and I have to start doing it again. But we never give up. You know? The idea is to be an irresistible force pushing against an immovable object. And sometimes the immovable object has to give up. And we have to get a city of our dreams. Right? Can anybody recognize this picture? It's a heritage site in the center of the city. Can anybody see the heritage? <laughs> this is the corner of Brigade Road and Residency Road. I'm sure you guys all go and hang out there quite a lot. And can you see right in the middle that little thing? That is a, that is a uh, monument built in 1918 after, to commemorate the Indian soldiers who died in World War I. Right? And you can't even see it. And it's just surrounded by billboards and it's the whole thing is... There's a little bit of greenery, but the park is completely fenced. You cannot go into that space. And I always see people standing here in this corner and trying to take pictures, selfies with the Brigade Road in the background and trying to avoid being run over by a bus or a car, which is... It's a very famous selfie spot of Bangalore. Right? And we took this and said, what can be done to this space? And you can actually make it look like that. This is Brigade Road. You get, there is that much physical space available, that's the war memorial. You can still see the petrol, we kept the petrol bunk. And you can add some steps there so people, kept, people can sit on the steps here and look at it. And it becomes a space for people. And Bangalore really needs these kind of spaces where you can go and just watch other people, which is the, most, which is the reason you go to malls anyway. Right? <laughs> the most fun thing to do is watching other people. Right? Without paying for it and without being air conditioned either. Right? We also put a big 10 bus stop here so you can easily come there and go whenever you like. Right? This is a small. We have, so we have, what, we have, what I do is I don't wait to be asked to solve a problem. I just go on finding problems where, where there are opportunities and keep proposing to the city saying, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Some of them start working, some many of them fail. But you don't give up that easily. This is the corner of uh, the hockey stadium. I don't know how many of you know this location where Langford Road meets Rainier Street. And this is the, Nanja, it's called Nanjappa Circle. And there's a statue of Ambedkar, for some reason, wrapped up in blue plastic <laughs> there, standing there, but it's now been inaugurated. And uh, he's sitting in almost like a jail. Look at this. There are no footpaths for people. Can you see that? Not a single place where people can walk. Wherever they can walk, it's been encroached by various elements. And there is no, and the tree is lost in the middle of a traffic island. With exactly the same thing, if you, you can make it look like that. Very easy, right? 
This is not rocket science. This is not like some. This is not even drone science. That's my friend. <laughs> this is common sense. You know. This is common sense and common sense, and I'm sure we can all make it happen, right? Bangalore has gone from a laid-back pensioners' paradise kind of place, and it was then a garden city where everybody used to everybody used to have fruit trees in their gardens when I was a kid. From there, it became pub town in the mid '90s. Everybody, everywhere, you used to see pubs, and then boom town where you had these funny boards like one half of the house for sale, the other half the sister is fighting with the brother and not for sale. You see this quite a bit, and from there it went to Silicon City, where everywhere there was a cyber cafe wherever you looked, and finally we went from Bengaluru to probably not even Bengaluru, but it's Bangalore. We bungled it, you know, <laughs> completely bungled it. But that is because 60 percent of the city is migrant today who has come here in the 10, past 10, 15 years, and they don't know anybody else. They don't have any appreciation of the history of the city. Most people think Bangalore started the same time as Infosys. Which is roughly, which is, which is roughly 1990 or so, and uh, uh, Bangalore uh, next year is 480 years old. Can you believe that? It is the second or third oldest city in India after Varanasi or something. So, continuously settled urban area. No, everybody, nobody knows where it is, and the best kept secret of the city is in the center of the city, right? This is the map of Bangalore. This is the center of Bangalore. And there used to be a fort, which is no longer there, where the city market, that is the city market, that white little thing that you see there. But the entire center of the city is mostly controlled by government. And we are working on this project called the Golden Zone, or in Kannada, we call it Swarna Valaya, which is the Golden Zone. And it is that big, 2,700 acres. That was the old city of Bangalore. That is where Bangalore started, that thing which looks like a cow's face. That is the old city of Bangalore, that city market. There was an old fort here which is demolished. A little bit of that fort. How many of you have seen that little bit of the fort that remains? That is only the northern gateway. The, the fort was almost 30 acres, about 30 times bigger than that. And it's gone. And this is Alsur Lake. I don't, this is Kaban Park. You can see Vidhan Sauda here. That's the race course. That's a golf club. And that's Bangalore Palace, which for some reason is all gated and nobody is allowed inside except for an exhibition or something. It is bigger than Kaban Park and Lalbagh put together. You know, it's such a huge open space which is not allowed to us. So we are putting, pushing campaigns to open up these spaces for our city. And this is the plan that we have made. And Bangalore had, oh, this is a 10-year-old newspaper cutting, 10-year-old story. It is less than 400, 300, 400 buildings left today. Most of it is demolished. Intac is an organization as well as Maud Institute, which I work with. We are trying desperately to leave a legacy for our children, saying that, you know, we'll come from an old city. This is what we have to see. And no city has pride if there is no sense of continuity, right? If there is a... Most great cities of the world have a sense of continuity. Rome, for instance, is 3,000 years old. And you can see a 3,000-year-old story there when you go there. We cannot see anything even 25, 30 years old. It's getting covered by billboards or it's completely destroyed. We don't see anything anymore. So one single road in that zone, which is what I call the Swarna Marga, the, and we are trying to push it instead of saying going pub crawling, can we go heritage crawling? It has more than 29 buildings on the road, more than 100 years old. It starts at the, near the old fort, near Tipu's palace, which looks like this. See, there is, this is the old fort of Bangalore, where this thing is. Tipu's palace is here. Just in this one small two km, square kilometer area, there are more than 13 heritage buildings. And those of you who are interested, I'm happy to take you for a walk anytime. This is Tipu's palace, summer palace. This is the old center of Bangalore, which looks like this. There's a beautiful old church, which looks like that. There are some uh, examples, like the National Gallery of Modern Art, which I was the architect of on the same street, which has been restored back to its original status. We have got a lot of public imagination coming to fight for this uh, heritage. And there are many other examples from other cities. The Sabarmati Riverfront looks like this. It was a big disaster, not even 10 years back. Now it looks like this. Can you believe it? 
So it's possible to do anything in India. But Bank India has huge diversity. It is not, it is for everyone. If you see a scene like this on your way to work today, you will not be surprised. It's part of our life. And this is the beauty of our country, that we accommodate everybody and everything high-tech to low-tech to no-tech to <laughs> naked guys too. You know, we're, that's what I like. So I want to end by saying, Bangalore needs you. And the youth are going to make this... If you want to keep living here, take a part in this city, city's future. Thank you.